I estimated just cutting two by fours and I should be able to get 900 two by four cuts out of one battery. I was using my electric chainsaw for three hours straight and I, and I still had like 20% of my battery power left. I cooked a large breakfast for my family with bacon, eggs, hash browns, and French toast. And I still had 30% of my power left. $1,800. So, and you can pick up a used solar panel just like this one for like a hundred bucks. Hey guys, right here, welcome to the channel. I like to explore power options when the power goes out. So DJI wanted me to do a compare video comparing their power station to the EcoFlow Delta II. Now they sent me all the numbers and DJI looked very impressive. So if they can compete with D EcoFlow, who's been around a very long time, that's great. So this is gonna be an honest review. Let's see how they compare. Now DJI have great engineers that make drones and it looks like they started from scratch when they built this power station. So let's see what their engineers came up with. So I have been using both of these power stations for about a month now. And I'll be honest, I haven't found anything terribly wrong with this power station. Now, one thing that they have specifically to their drone company is these fast charging ports. So if you're a filmer and you like drones, I would definitely just go ahead and buy this one. Don't worry about the other power stations. This one will do great for you. However, if you don't have drones, let's see how this compares um, to like the typical power stations, specifically this one. See if there's any other major uses or major reasons why you'd get this one over something else. Now, both these power stations have the same battery. So they claim that they can support a continuous 2200 watts of power output and 2600 watts for 30 seconds with a surge of 4400 watts. Now this power station has 1800 watts output with a 2700 watt surge. So very significant here. So let's go ahead and try that out. Okay, I have a base load of about 800 watts and now let's plug my heat gun in here. Okay, we'll, turn on, we'll turn on high. We'll let this run for a little bit here. Okay, this has been running for about five minutes and everything's been fine. Okay, we'll try this same base load with the EcoFlow Delta II. I've got the base load of just under 800 watts. Let's go ahead and start the heat gun. So this one is actually running it pretty well. Let's see how long it'll run. They say, this one says it can only support 1800 watts. But it's going over that, actually. Let's see how long this goes for. I think I'm just going to run it until it dies. This is really good. Okay, it just died. Looks like that lasted near 30 seconds. But that's fine because this doesn't claim it could have even supported that. Only 800, 1800 watts. And um, a lot of people have tested this and it can support 1800 watts. Okay, I'm just gonna try two really large loads. I think this uses, this hairdryer uses 1600 watts and that I think that's 1200 watts. Let's just try them both. This should definitely overload the unit here. Okay. 1400, oh. All right. Oh, yep, definitely overloaded it. Okay, we'll try something else here. I've got a base load of 1200 watts, which is another power station being charged. And we'll try the, air, the uh, hair dryer here. Okay, my hair dryer is having a hard time, so let's go back to the uh, heat gun here. Okay, that should be on high. Oh, I want to get a little bit more power. Well, it says it can hold this for 30 seconds. Let's just see. So it looks like it held that for about 25 seconds, which is actually pretty good for a power station that small and light. Okay, let's try testing the surge capacity. And for that, we're going to be testing my, starting my RV air conditioner. It's December, so I've got to uh, convince the air conditioner that it's a hot sunny day outside. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna start it. 
but my 30 amp RV plug right here, plug it into our measuring device plug, and uh, we've got a clamp meter that's going to measure the inrush. Okay, I don't think it'll start it, but um, we'll just try it on the Delta too. Here we go. Let's see if it starts it. I think it started it. Nope. Oh, it's trying. Oh, I think it started it. It's pretty good. It's running. Yeah, it's really cold air. Let's go see what the inrush was. Twenty-nine amps at one hundred and twenty volts. Whatever uh, that is. So this should be able to start it just fine. Okay, now let's try the DJI. Okay, inrush. Okay, everything should be the same here. Okay, so the DJI was also able to start the air conditioner, but it looks like the inrush current this time was 36 amps, which is 4,320 watts. So I did climb up on the roof and had a look at the air conditioner. It looks like there's a big capacitor on there, and basically what that does is it helps it give like an extra boost when it's uh, trying to start the air conditioner. So it looks like there's some sort of factory soft start in this RV. Now, if you don't have that, your RV air conditioner will be really hard to start and probably neither of these power stations would start your air conditioner. So remember, both these power stations have a battery that's about 1,000 watt hours. So that means it can produce 1,000 watts for about an hour. So that means it could run my air conditioner for about an hour. But there is some inefficiencies because of the inverter has to also run. So definitely less than an hour. So using these power stations to run a large RV air conditioner, probably not the best idea, but if you have solar around, that's a different story. So let's go ahead and look at the solar on these uh, power stations. So my wife told me that I need to add this disclaimer before I talk about the solar because I was having some problems with DJI's solar system, but it is good for very specific scenarios. So watch to the end of the solar segment because it'll explain the problem that I was having. So these are the foldable solar panels that DJI currently sells on their website. They are 100 watts each and they fold and you have to unfold them. So if you want to have 600 watts like I have, you literally have to unbox six solar panels and set them all up and then run all of the wires to the power station. It kind of takes a while. I personally prefer just having one bigger solar panel. And this has taken a while. So to save on cost, good news is that if you're not planning on using solar, you don't have to pay the money to buy the solar charge controllers. It's not built into this unit. But if you are using solar, bad news because you have to buy this separately. Okay, you can have 200 watts on each port, but it won't produce an output of more than 400 watts per unit. So technically I have 800 watts, but the solar panels that they come with it are only 100 watts. So one, two, three, four, five, 600 watts we're gonna have set up here. That's kind of weird. Okay. Can't really use my handle now. I guess. Okay. This is taking me like an hour to set up. Oh my gosh. So we got 600 watts connected, 229 watts coming in. Not a lot of power coming in. It looks like each port only allows up to 30 volts and 10 amps. You gotta be really careful about which solar panels you use to connect to this. All right, let's connect EcoFlow to solar. Looks like EcoFlow has this one big port that can accept up to 60 volts and 15 amps max. So I've got a lot more freedom about what I can connect to this. Okay, just look at your sticker and make sure your voltage is below uh, 60 volts here, which it definitely is, because I think this one's 32 volts. Yeah, and then you just plug it in. This is like way easier. 
And I could even hook a separate solar panel in here as well if I wanted. 281 watts coming in. 229. These, oh my gosh. I can't believe that. I gotta show you this. 229 watts coming in. Here is a dirty solar panel. 315 watt solar panel. And I've got 281 watts coming in. So these have got to be the worst performing solar panels I think I've ever seen. That is so bad. Okay, I just looked at the price on these. These are $300 a piece. So three, six, nine, eighteen hundred dollars so and you can pick up a used solar panel just like this one for like a hundred bucks on facebook marketplace so look at that that's like way cleaner one plug two hours later okay guys two hours later i came back to the power station and this was all the way full at 100 percent charge so it shouldn't have done that at 229 watts so I looked at it and it was still showing 229. So I think what happened was this was frozen and it was really charging with more than 229 watts. So what I did is I brought out my heat gun and I plugged it in and then I was getting 500 watts from solar, which is much more reasonable, which is there must have been a glitch on the screen. So good news is that the solar panels, they were working. So I've got to apologize to uh, Zygnes because these solar panels were actually working pretty well. Most solar panels produce about 70%. These were producing 80%. So these would actually be really good for putting on an airplane if you need to travel around and film. I'm not gonna fit my large solar panel in an airplane. Or if you're traveling in a car, these will fit much better in your car if you wanna travel around. But if you throw three of these in your suitcase, then it should charge this all the way in four hours of good sun. Okay, so which one would I buy? So these power stations are actually really similar. They both have expandable batteries. They both can be plugged into your cigarette lighter on your car when you're to charge when you're driving places. They both can run pretty much any appliance that has a large cord like this. This one does have a little more power, so it could probably run maybe a welder better, but this one can still run microwaves. They're priced really similar depending on what cells are going on at the time. They both can act as a UPS. They both can act as a unripped. They both can act as a uninterruptible power supply UPS. And this is probably my favorite size power station just because if you have a plug, it'll run it. And you don't have to haul around something that's like 100 pounds. Both of these are under 30 pounds. I think this one is maybe two pounds less. This one came in at 29 pounds on my scale. The EcoFlow Delta II, you know, it's just a really good all around power station, especially if you're on a budget and you wanna connect solar into this. It does have also a really good app. Now the DJI does have an app. They told me I haven't had a chance to use it yet. I think they did say that it needs a Wi-Fi connection for it to work. So this one's also very quiet. However, you can still hear the fans once in a while. With the DJI, you know, I don't think I've heard the fans come on once in all the time that I've used that. That is much more quiet. So this one is also very efficient. The DJI ran my fridge with my family of seven for like maybe about 10 hours. And this one ran a little bit longer probably because it has a smaller inverter. So by far my favorite feature of the DJI power station is its weight to power ratio. So let me know in the comments if you've seen any power station that even comes close to this weight to power ratio. I think this would also be very good if you do construction and you're on a job site. I estimated just cutting two by fours and I should be able to get 900 two by four cuts out of one battery. I was using my electric chainsaw for three hours straight and I, and I still had like 20% of my battery power left. I cooked a large breakfast for my family with bacon, eggs, hash browns, and French toast and I still had 30% of my power left. So with the surge capacity, it should run like all your compressors, jackhammers, whatever you want. This also came with a carrying case. So this is really dusty because I took this on a uh, four day trip on my side by side and this kept all the dust out, which is really nice. It's got this pocket to hold all the cords. <clears throat> ah. So then it's got a zipper so you can access all the ports still. 
So this is definitely better if you plan on getting this dusty. And so DJI does have a smaller power station than this one. And I wish they would have sent me one of those and I could show you that, but it'd probably be better for uh, just camping and uh, keeping your phones charged. So as a reward for watching to the end, I am going to be giving away all six of these foldable solar panels. What you wanna do if you want me to mail you one of the six I have here is use any of the affiliate links I have in the description below. I've got affiliate links for these power stations, for used solar panels, home backup power systems that you can hook to your main house electrical panel to uh, keep your lights on if the power goes out and to save your money on your electric bill. But if you use any of those links, it won't cost you anything extra and it should help pay for uh, the shipping. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna be part of more giveaways. It's a, definitely an exciting time with new solar products and cheap solar panels. If you want to see any more of the videos from my channel, YouTube thinks that you will like uh, these videos. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll catch you later.